Hello everyone, today I am here to talk to you about this book right here, Miss Mayhem by Rachel Hawkins. This is the second book in the Rebel Bell series, the first book I read and reviewed, and it's right over here. And there's not a lot I can really say about this book without spoiling, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this whole video as a spoilery section. So if you've not yet read Miss Mayhem by Rachel Hawkins, or Rebel Bell, the first book, I highly recommend it. It's very corny, very cheesy, but... I, I, it's fun. I really enjoy it. Pick those up, then come back and we can discuss. So B comes back within the first couple chapters and that's it. Like, she's back. And honestly, because it was so fast, I was getting the feeling that she wasn't real. That she was like someone in disguise as B to like get information on the paladins or something. I don't know what I really thought, but I figured this isn't B. They, they wouldn't make it that easy, but they did. That's it. Also, no one remembers who she is, and that was like a huge problem in the first couple chapters, and then just kind of fades away, like everyone, oh yeah, that's right, I remember now, like, okay, I was expecting uh, having to work to get her remembered, like, I feel like that was a very irrelevant piece of the plot in my opinion. Also, David and Harper's relationship is nothing like I expected, like, they're genuinely getting along, they're acting like a storybook boyfriend and girlfriend would, and that's not, that's not who they are. Like, they did nothing but argue, they were enemies, which is what made them start dating, you know, that whole thing. Like, I expected, you know, adorable arguments. It was just too sappy. They just didn't have enough playful scenes, didn't have enough teasing of each other at all. Like, that's gone. Just because they're dating, they're just like, oh, I shouldn't be mean to you anymore. That's why, that's why you're dating. So unlike Rebel Bell, the southern accents are shoved down our throats in this one. Y'all, every other sentence, there's apostrophes on the ends of words and emphasis on South and Alabama and like, it's almost like the author overheard someone say like, oh, yeah, I read these books except I imagined them in like New York, like with Brooklyn accents the whole time. And then she just got really possessive over the fact this is taking place in the South. I didn't originally imagine accents on these characters, but because of the way this was written, they kind of gained accents as I was reading, so you did it. Congratulations. Everything in this book is so dramatic. First of all, there's the whole thing with MB overhearing uh, Ryan and Harper talking about like, let's not tell David about this, and because pronouns, Mary Beth is like, uh, are you guys getting back together or something? Why aren't you telling her boyfriend something? Why aren't you telling me something? Why am I not part of the conversation? Of course it's not about that at all, it's the whole paladin thing. Then there's this whole really dramatic scene with Harper saving David from the fire. The fire that Alexander started, that no one is questioning, the police aren't involved, there's no no questions about that from authorities. I mean, plot convenience, I guess, but... Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna let that slide for right now. And can we all please just talk about this? I hadn't realized that my voice is getting so loud, but from the way Abby blinked at me, I thought maybe I'd gotten close to shouty on that last bit, but I felt shouty. All I ever did was try to help, try to make things better, and it seemed like I was falling all over the place. Sure, I got through the first trials, but I was wearing a leotard in the rec center. I had no boyfriend. Things with me and my best friend were insanely weird. And I'd been insulted by a munchkin wearing fake teeth. There's only so much a girl can take. Ah, oh, you're so dramatic. I love you. So David and Harper break up over an argument that probably is what got them together in the first place. And I mean, hey, that's what happens when you act all sappy when all you did in the last book was tease each other and argue. And... But again, I'm going to ignore that fact for today. And Harper says something about like, oh, we've only been together six months, that's the shortest relationship anyone's ever been with. Like, girl, my first relationship lasted two weeks. Calm yourself. I know people who have crossed the I love you border within half that time. Like. Six, that, not bad, not bad. Oh my gosh, but when Harper and David first broke up, I absolutely cringed thinking, okay, it was bad when your little group of, I don't wanna call them all paladin, but you know, the group of paladin who are protecting David involves 
David, your boyfriend, Ryan, your ex-boyfriend, and you, because you dumped Ryan for David. When they both became ex-boyfriends, I just cringed. And after they break up, Harper expects everything to be totally cool and normal, like, oh yeah, so I'm just gonna dump my boyfriend, and then, you know, of course we have to see each other again, so I'm, I'm just gonna be super friendly, and I expect him to be the same way, like, we're just gonna pretend that six months just didn't happen. What? I, I mean, maybe with Ryan that kind of happened because you were forced to talk to each other more often, but do you really think that if you didn't have, essentially, jobs that went together, like, that you would have any affiliation with each other after that? And the best part is she doesn't even understand why he's so upset. They say something like, oh, he's, he's the one who did the dumping, not me, so like, why is he so upset? You, you, you told him, okay, well, you know, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this, well, maybe I should just cross being girlfriend off the list, huh? Maybe that's what I should do, and he's like, okay, I don't want to break up. Like, he says, I don't want to break up, and now you're saying, oh, but he's the one who broke up with me, so why is he so upset about it? I should be upset. I should be crying. I should be the one not wanting to talk. Why do I try to understand Harper? Why, why do I try? I don't know. So, B and Ryan? I don't know, I'm not against it. It's it can be it can be cute. I don't know. Best friend and ex-boyfriend in real life, maybe not, but but like they're two secondary characters and they're both kind of halfway in the spotlight, so like I I can see them working out. I think in this context it's adorable, but no. Harper lets this ruin her life. It absolutely ends her world to see that B and Ryan might be together. Calm down! This, this entire book can be summed up in three words. Harper, calm down. And not only does she let this ruin her life, she runs to her Aunt Jewel because she just wants to talk to someone about it. That, that's fine. You want to talk to somebody about your, your problems, of course. But she tells Aunt Jewel everything and leaves out this part about B and Ryan. The one thing that she went to someone to talk to people about. So now just someone knows that you have magic powers and you did nothing to help yourself get through this issue that you have with your friend and your ex dating. So we do get more information on Leanne in this book, which is interesting. It's definitely building up to something, which I'm sure we'll get to in the third book. I don't know what yet. Other than the fact that it got her into the pageant, which, how did Sarah buy that story about? I just, I just feel like I need to be in the pageant because, you know, my dead older sister was in the pageant, so it just, it just really means something to me, you know? Why did she buy that? That's not the point. My point is, we got more information and I'm interested to see where it's going. There we go. Like, I, I want to know more significance of Leanne, like, why, why does it matter other than character development, like I said in my last video, or, you know, getting into the pageant, like, that seems like a huge deal to just get her into the pageant, that was the only thing, but I'm sure the third book will tell us more about that. Leanne was probably, like, a previous paladin or something, and that when they say that she got drunk and died in a car accident, like, maybe that's not what happened. So then there's this big climactic scene at the end where B and Ryan are both against her trying to keep her away from saving David because they think that saving David involves not going toward him, not getting him out of the way. And now is not the time to be talking about your love life! Like that is one thing I didn't really love about the book is that romance is always the center of whatever they're doing. It's, it's involved. They cannot push it out of the way for anything at all. Like, I'm cool with it being the main conflict, but when it's part of every plot and subplot, there's only so much I can take, you know? As a reader, I feel like that's overboard, like, you can't have more priorities than that. And I know that these are teenagers, so of course they're just like, oh my gosh, my love life is so terrible, but I as a teenager am not thinking about my love life 100% of the time. Even if it's like 85%, 90%, 99 no there is not a page in this book I'm willing to bet that doesn't say something about a boyfriend or a past relationship everything's about that 
They can just never push it aside for anything, no matter how important it might be. But still, during this climactic scene where everyone's about to, like, die, well, David probably is going to die, she's just talking to Ryan, saying, like, all right, let's just get this out of the way. When I was dating you, I almost kissed David. I'm, I'm sorry, I... I mean, I know it's not relevant now, but I'm, I'd like to confess it to you. He's like, okay, yeah, I understand, and also, you know, while we were dating, I kissed Mary Beth, and, you know, I'm sorry, and I hope it's- Oh my- You kissed Mary Beth before we broke up? This- This is not acceptable, young man. This is not okay. I cannot believe- You hypocrite. I will say this book was significantly less predictable than Rebel Bell was. In fact, I don't think there was a single thing in this that I found predictable. Like, even that scene with Mary Beth and Ryan and Harper, it kind of went, we have to tell David the truth. Tell David the truth about what? Chapter break. Okay, so David's standing right behind them and, uh, drama. But then, Mary Beth stood there. Okay, this is more drama than I was anticipating. David's not even in the picture. All right, all right. Now it's about our love lives. And the book ends with this adorable little note from David, and I say it's adorable because, like, I know people have, like, a different vocabulary for when they're talking, than when they're writing, than when they're reading, and stuff like that, and you can just totally hear David's voice in this note at the end, He's just throwing a couple jokes in and things like that. And I'm gonna be honest, if there wasn't a third book, I would have loved this ending. It would have been a fantastic, beautiful ending. And I know that it didn't solve most of the problems, and we do have a couple things to still wrap up, but like, it's just kind of, wow, this is over. This is, that's it then, we're walking away. Alright, it was fun. That's all. I thought that was beautiful, how this book ended. And of course, of course I want more. Of course I want more. Why, why would I read a series if I didn't want to read the third book? But can you imagine if that's how it ended? Like, I know it's there's another book, and I'm excited to see, you know, how they go and find David. They get back into it, finally defeat people, things like that. Like, Alexander, why did we trust him ever? Why did we ever trust I didn't trust him. Why did you trust him? Again. I don't understand how I'm not going to try to. But I can't, I can't wait to see where this goes. That's all I have to say. That's all I have to say for this book. Leave a comment letting me know some of your favorite parts, anything you agree or disagree with. And you can subscribe if you so desire. Like if you liked. That's all I have to say. So long! Oh yeah, I was imagining them in like Brooklyn, New York, and so they all had those... I can't... Oh my gosh. Of course, it's not about that at all. It's about the whole pal pal paladin thing. Of course, it's not that... Ah! Oh, Harper. Harper, calm down. So David and Harper finally break up, and finally, oh my gosh, you sound like you're waiting for it. Girl.